Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to display any of your lists of strings as a pop-up variable inside Unity Inspector with the help of attribute and custom property drawer and we will be able to change this list on the fly and the pop-up menu will be automatically updated. At the end I will show you how to create a pop-up variable from all the scenes inside build settings which can be very handy when we want to create a script to open specific level so we can just assign the level directly from the pop-up. Also I would like to mention you can support me on Patreon and you will get all the project files from my tutorials including this one and the link is in the description. So let's start, let's create new empty game object and let's name it test pop-up. Let's create new script, let's call it pop-up test, let's open it, clean the file. Let's create public float number and I want to show you some example with the unity attributes. So let's create range attribute with a min value of 0 and max value of 1. Now let's save it and let's check in inside editor and we can see the float value inside inspector change to slider between 0 and 1. Now let's delete it and let's create public list of a type string with the name my list. Then let's create another public variable of a type string and the name pop-up. And my idea is to create some attribute, for example with the name list to pop-up, where can I provide the list and our pop-up variable inside inspector will show this list as a pop-up menu. And to define our custom attribute we need to create new public class with the name list to pop-up attribute which will inherit the property attribute class. Then let's create constructor with the name list to pop up attribute and let's try to put list of string as a parameter. This is not working. Now there is no way how to provide actual list as a parameter to our attribute because it needs actual values of these types or created arrays directly inside a parameter. Something like this which will not help us. So we need to find another way how to do it and I was thinking maybe we can put the whole class type as a parameter and if this class will have some static variables we can access them somehow with a name. So let's add static modifier in front of our list variable and inside our parameter constructor let's write type which will be the class type but first we need to add system namespace and the name will be underscore my type and to pass the class let's write type of and let's put pop-up test as a parameter. Now we see our attribute is working and let's put also the name of our value which is my list and also let's add string underscore property name to our constructor. Now let's connect this value so let's create local variables public type my type without underscore and also public string property name and let's connect them together inside a constructor. So this is ready. Now the second part of our custom attribute is the custom drawer which will change the representation of the value which we see inside inspector. So let's create public class list to pop up drawer which is inheriting property drawer class. Let's also add the unity editor namespace and also we need to add attribute with the name custom property drawer so the drawer will know which attribute is using. So let's put type of and list to pop up attribute in it. Then we need to create public override void on GUI method. Let's delete the base method and first we want to access to our list to pop-up attribute. So let's create it with the name ATB which will equals to attribute as a list to pop-up attribute. Now we need to create a list of string variable with the name string list which will equal to null. Now we need to ask if our attribute ATB dot my type which is basically our pop-up test class have somewhere a variable with the name my list and we will do it by method get field and let's put ATB dot property name as a parameter and we are asking if the result is not null and if this variable exists let's fill our string list with the same get field method but we want the actual value from it so let's write get value and let's put atb.myType as a parameter and because the result is object we need to cast it as a list of a string. 
and now we can ask if string list doesn't equal to null and also our string list dot count doesn't equal to zero that means our list is not empty and if not let's display our pop-up with the editor gui.popup method and let's put position as a first parameter property dot the name as a second then we need to pass selected index variable and last parameter will be our string list but let's change it to array with the two array method now we don't have the selected index variable, so let's create it above our onGUI method with the default value of zero. And let's finish our editor gui.popup, which is returning the int value and we will feed it to our selected index. Now our variable where we are using our custom attribute is a string and we want it to store our currently selected value from our dropdown list. So let's write property dot string value equals to our string list and we want selected index member from it. Now let's create else branch where we didn't find any list or the list is empty, where we just want to show basic string value without any modifications. So let's write editor GUI dot property field and let's put position, property, and a label as a parameters. Now to test it, let's go back to our pop-up test class and inside let's create some random list. So let's create public void create number list method where we will assign to our list new list with some random numbers. And also to be able to call this method from inspector, let's add context menu attribute with the name create number list. So let's save it. First, we can see the pop-up is showing empty string, but now from component menu, let's run our method and we can see the pop-up menu change to our drop-down list. But there is a slight problem when we unselect our game object and select it again, the value is not stored. So let's fix it. Let's select our selected index and let's move it down inside our if condition and what we want we will check our string list with the index of method if it already contains our property dot string value and the result can be minus one if didn't find any member or the index of the member now the minus one can be a problem because we are using our selected index in our string list so we can clamp it with the lowest value of zero with a matf.max and let's put zero as a second parameter. Now let's save it. Let's try it. Let's create a number list. Let's change the value and let's unselect our game object. And when we select it again, we can see the value is stored. Now let's make some cleaning. Let's move our property drawer to a separate script. So let's create a new folder with the name custom drawers and let's create new C-sharp script and let's call it list to pop-up drawer now inside our pop-up test script let's cut our property drawer and property attribute and let's paste them to our new file fix the errors let's add unit editor namespace and also system namespace now there might be slight problem because we are using the unity editor namespace and we can't build any project with it we need to use platform define directive to fix it so on top of our property drawer definition let's write hashtag if unity editor and at the end let's finish it with hashtag and if now this is fixed and this part of code is available only inside unity editor Let's go back to our pop-up test class. Let's clean it a little bit. Now let's duplicate our create number list method and let's change the name to be create alphabet list. And also let's change the list. So now we have completely different lists. And now we can test it. First, let's create a number list. We can see this is working. Then let's create alphabet list and this is working as well. Now let's make one more test. Let's create a number list again and let's change the value to be three and let's save the file and let's close the unity. Let's reopen it again and we can see our pop-up is not there, but at least we can see the value. The problem is we need to recreate the list again. The list was not stored. 
because the unity doesn't save or in other words it doesn't serialize a static variables and we are using static list so to fix it let's open our pop-up test let's select our static list and let's rename it to temp list because now we will be using it just for displaying the value with our attribute and also let's change it inside our attribute and for actual storing the data let's create new public list of string with the name pop-up list and this one will not be static so unity will store its values and inside our methods let's change the templates with our pop-up list so the actual lists will be stored there now let's duplicate the last method and let's rename it to update list and the method will be super simple. It will just assign to our static temp list our pop-up list. Now let's test it. First, we can see our pop-up list is visible because it is a public variable. Now let's run our update list method and we can see our pop-up will show our list and it will automatically jump into previously stored variable three. Now let's open our script again and first let's fix our public pop-up list and let's add attribute with the name height in inspector and now we can see the list is not visible and after we run our update list method we can see only the pop-up so now when we save the scene and we will reopen it again we can just run our update list method and the list will be filled again but we have another problem when we create a second component of our pop-up test class and when we create alphabet list on that one and when we update it we can see our both pop-ups are changed because they are using the same static variable even if their lists are different and now we need to find some solution which will fix these two problems the automatic updating of our pop-ups when we reopen the scene and displaying two different components showing the different list. So let's open our pop-up test script and here we can use iSerialization callback receiver. So let's implement the interface. Let's delete the exceptions and inside on before serialize, let's copy and paste our previous method which will assign our pop-up list to our temp list automatically when we load the scene or every time we change the value or even when our component on inspector is visible and now we fix both problems so let's test it and now we can see our both components are showing different lists and it is because the on before serialized callback is rapidly assigning first component list to the static list then it will show it and then assigning the second component list to the static list and it will do over and over again until we switch the inspector now let's create something useful with it let's open our script let's clean our two methods and let's create new method which will load all our scenes inside our build settings and it will put them to our pop-up automatically so let's create public method with a return type list of string with the name get all scenes in build and first let's define a list of string with the name all scenes which will equals to new list of string then let's create for loop from i equals to zero to i less than scene manager and let's first add the unity engine dot scene management namespace and let's continue with a scene count in build settings then Let's define a string variable with the name scene path, which will equal to scene utility dot get scene path by build index. And let's put I inside it. Then let's define string scene name, which will equal to system dot io dot path dot get file name without extension and let's put our scene path inside it and this will cut the scene path and it will give us only the name of the scene and now let's add to our all scene list our scene name and to finish it let's return the all scenes now inside our on before serialize method we can first assign to our pop-up list this new method and by this we are automatically updating the all scenes in a build settings even when we change them and add some new ones so let's test it first let's remove the second component then let's lock the inspector let's open the scenes let's duplicate our sample scene and let's call it main menu let's open build settings and let's drag and drop our scenes into it and immediately our pop-up changed and it shows 
all our scenes. Now let's select the main menu scene again, let's duplicate it and let's change the name to level 1 and let's duplicate it a couple of times. Let's move them to our build settings and we can see them immediately inside our pop-up. Now let's open our script for the last time and for example if we want to have multiple pop-ups of the same list we can just duplicate them and let's rename first one to current scene, second one to next scene and the last one to main menu and we can see we have three different pop-ups and each one can hold the different values. So that's everything for this video. I hope I show you something new and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one.